Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss. In Thor Love and Thunder, we'll break the Marvel world as the first fourth MCU solo film following a single character, breaking us free from the trilogy plus team up pattern that we saw with Iron Man, with Cap, and with Spider Man. Now, sure, Thor Ragnarok represented a sort of reset for the character, but if this is truly a fresh start for Thor, why is the God of Thunder facing the ghosts of his past, like his ex Jane Foster and his broken hammer Mjolnir? Well, the truth is that Marvel head Kevin Feige has never really cared about the trilogy structure and has instead allowed his characters' natural trajectories to chart their paths. Was Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness a sequel to the 2016 Doctor Strange or really a sequel to Avengers Infinity War or a sequel to WandaVision? Does it even matter? All of these characters just leap from title to title to face whatever demons they discover along the way. And in Thor's case, despite what seemed like an insane tonal shift between Thor the Dark World and Ragnarok, the reason Jane's return now feels like a natural, logical move for the God of Thunder is because that God of Thunder has always been a broken, unworthy the loser, and that's why we always love him as he is trying to win the affection of whoever, whether it's Jane Foster, Valkyrie, and now Star Lord. He is a loser with a perennial broken heart, and so despite Jane being out of sight, out of mind, we always want to see these two reunited. So let's break down the real reason for that Thor's unworthiness in this next episode of our series, Feige's Plan Why Thor Was Never Worthy. Now, initially, Kevin Feige gave a lot of latitude to the creative teams behind the first two Thor films to express their unique visions of the character. Kenneth Branagh introduced Thor or in a Shakespearean tale about royal duty and betrayal. In Thor The Dark World, director Alan Taylor brought in the scope to distant realms and their intersection with astrophysics. And let's not forget the first mention of the term 616 universe that was finally just codified in Multiverse of Madness. Now, of course, Thor The Dark World has a reputation as the MCU film fans might have connected the least with, perhaps due to the 35 days of reshoots that Kevin Feige cited and the awkward dubbed audio the studio forced in to set up the ether as an infinity stone, ignoring its phase of matter. But during these experimental early phases, Thor really just struggled to find his place in the Avengers. He wasn't the prototypical leader or the smart ass or the muscle or the tortured soul. He was just a god. And often while these ensemble crises unfolded, Thor was just kind of sequestered on an odd mythological side quest like cave bathing or axe forging. But ultimately, Thor's strongest contributions were the looser, more comedic beats. I care how you speak. Loki is beyond reason, but he is of Asgard and he is my brother. He killed 80 people in two days. He's adopted. Come on, Cap. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> ah, and that last example was the breakthrough moment. Chris Hemsworth, hardly saying anything, conveys total existential panic over someone else matching his sacred worthiness, robbing him of his one supposed unique advantage over the others. We actually learn in Endgame how Cap in that moment was just sparing Thor's pride. He truly could lift that hammer, yet by Endgame, Thor has been so broken down that he no longer cares about that precious worthiness. And the reason Thor was able to get to that point is because Hemsworth and the studio both recognize that what makes Thor great in the MCU isn't his worthiness and his pride, it's his unworthiness and his anxiety. He is as unstable and as temperamental as the hammer that he wields. Mjolnir is the perfect metaphor for his soul. The most revelatory moments throughout the franchise were centered around his relationship with that hammer, from his failure to lift it in the 2011 film to his crisis of faith when Hela shatters it. Faith that was only restored when his father's ghost quips, Are you Thor, the god of hammers? Of course, Thor is the god of thunder, but one could argue the MCU Thor's best qualities is that he is the god of this hammer. The decision to shatter Mjolnir at the beginning of Ragnarok was a pretty bold one, only made after Hemsworth and Kevin Feige and Taika Waititi decided to unleash Thor's broken spirit after Age of Ultron, which is something that Hemsworth revealed at Comic-Con in 2017. Well, I've, I've played this character five times. It, look, me personally, I got a bit bored of myself and thought we gotta try something different. Spoke with Taika, spoke with Kevin, and all of us agreed if we're gonna make a third for, we have to really push the envelope and experiment and take it to another level. So that was what this film was, you know? Um, cut his hair, break his hammer, change his clothes, change the world, and uh, I think that's what you're going to see and be excited about is something incredibly unique and different for 
not only the Thor world, but the, the Marvel universe. Taika Waititi gets a lot of credit for reinventing Thor in the MCU, and he deserves a lot of it, but really his successes in Ragnarok were the result of him identifying the character's strengths from previous movies. His hammer anxiety, his hometown hero fixation, his rivalry with Loki. And Waititi built the Ragnarok film around those qualities. Breaking his hammer, destroying his home, and really taking the second act of Thor The Dark World, where he and Loki teamed up on a fun quest, and made that essentially the entire Ragnarok film. So again, it has never been about Thor's worthiness, it's been about his unworthiness. Ragnarok's true success were a function of Waititi playing up Thor as a loser, something Waititi has perfected in his comedic work, taking high status characters and revealing them to be pathetic, whether they're powerful vampires puking up blood on a bender, or Hitler as a boy's imaginary friend. So in Ragnarok, Thor begins dumped by Jane, he loses his hammer, he gets his head shaved like a biblical Samson, he gets rejected by Valkyrie, he fights as a gladiator and loses that fight, and then gets his eye knocked out, and then, failing to defeat Hela in the final battle, must unleash the foe that he defeated in the first act to allow that fire monster to destroy his home. Infinity War is a better movie because Thor loses, he fails to go for the head. Endgame is a better movie for the way Thor's inner anxieties finally match his external appearance, and the bliss that we feel when Thor finally admits that he's not the only Avenger worthy of his hammer. I knew it. And so, with Thor Love and Thunder, unworthiness, again, seems to be at the heart of it all. As Thor, for once, turns away from fights and gawks at the woman who dumped him, now wielding the metaphor for his broken soul, Watiti is, of course, adapting the Jason Aaron Mighty Thor and God of Thunder runs from the comics, in which Thor's conflict with Gore, the God Butcher, rattles his worthiness so that he relinquishes the hammer. Now, I, for one, never thought we would see Natalie Portman return to the MCU, but her return here is actually a natural step, because it forces Thor to confront an anxiety from his past after he had gone through all of these stages of evolution in the Ragnarok era. So her return works because despite Thor's growth, he has proven unable to get over Jane. He brought her up in Ragnarok. She didn't dump me, you know. I dumped her. It was a mutual dumping. And then crying over her in Endgame. Oh, you know, Jane and I aren't even dating anymore, so... Jane is the one major broken piece of his past that this broken Mjolnir needs to reassemble himself. So she isn't the ill-fitting love interest from an earlier era where Marvel didn't know what it was doing. All along, she has been the Jedi to his Forrest Gump, who found her way back to him like a feather in the wind. Both of these broken birds destined to cross paths once more. So will Thor finally be worthy of her love? I hope not, as Hela proved Thor is more fun when he swiped left. Thank you for joining us for episode two of this exploration of Kevin Feige's MCU Strategy. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at EA Boss and follow New Rockstars. Subscribe to New Rockstars for more analysis of everything you love. Thanks for watching. Bye.